I think you'll know how to read together. Now, we talked about the typical domestic installation where I was using switches, physical switches, and uh, uh, fuses. Now, with the advancement in technology, the fuse has been replaced by electric circuit breakers. And this, the circuit breakers are selected so that they disconnect the circuit when an overload current is detected. But of course, when the fault has been rectified, they can be reset, unlike the fuse, which has to be replaced. So the MCB is a more economical uh, device than the switch, than the fuse. Now, since we are doing the bit of the design, I think I'd like you to redraw that typical installation using the double pole circuit breakers and the single pole circuit breakers. Well, the double pole is used for isolation. The single pole switches the single pole circuit breakers are used for the final sub circuits. So as an exercise, try to draw that typical installation using MCBs. Now that typical installation was basically for one unit. Now if you proceed, suppose you have got a building with more consumers. Now usually depending on the supply, when you apply to the KPLC, if it's a big installation, you normally apply for a three-phase installation. So the big buildings with more consumers, depending on the number, they will provide you with a three-phase power supply. Normally, when they are supplying their power, they normally assume an 8 kVA for a single user. That's what I see in most of their, of their bills or uh, calculations. So when this supply is more than 8 KVA for the domestic installations, then they can calculate how many per phase and then how many, uh, whether they will need to supply you the three phase or the single phase. Now, buildings more than consumers, they, this be, be served by the three phase power supply. And the three phase supply, when it comes in, we have our distribution board here, our distribution board, and this will mainly consist of the cutouts. We have got the three phases which are labeled here L1, L2, and L3. Remember, the neutral is one wire, so the neutral will be looped to provide for neutral for each of the three phases. So this will be the cutouts, and then there will be the meters. The meters, they will be looped, and then through double pole switches, they will connect upwards to each consumer. So the energy, energy meters are looped, maybe so many for per phase, so many per phase, so many per phase, so that the load is divided equally among the three phases. The key thing to remember is the neutral being one, it has to be shared in each of these connections. Then from the energy meters through the double pole switches, and then the cabling will go up to each of the consumers. Of course, here you've got the earth, mid, earthing terminal and down to the earth for the installation earthing. MET, main earthing terminal, connecting down to the earth. Now, these connections here, they'll go to each consumer. In the premises of each consumer, we'll have what we call a consumer control unit consumer control unit. I think there are a lot of discussions. What is a CC? What is a consumer control unit? In our discussion here, let's assume is the power kind of a miniature distribution for the power supply of a single unit, like the typical building you have. This is one supply. There are so many in one building. So this uh, consumer control unit will get the cabling, which comes from the distribution board located somewhere the life, the neutral, and the earth. Now the sizing of the cables, again by design, will depend on the load which is connected here. Later on we shall talk about uh, the loading when we talk about the switches, the socket outlets, and the rest, so that you have a rough idea of the sizing of these cables here. Of course, key things to remember is the values of these MCBs here should be such that it protects the cables against any excess 
current. So this MCB is more or less than protecting the cable running from here to here. In buildings, if they are high rise, there are those high recommendations. I think it's more than nine meters. You have to provide a support for the cable. You have also take care of the fumes in case there is a fire. Again, all that is in the high regulations which you can read. So at the premises of one consumer, we have these consumer control units. So the cable from the dis distribution board when it comes in, there will be the live, the neutral, and the ECC, the earth continuity conductor. The live and the neutral will pass through a double pole switch. And then the live is connected through a live bus bar. And this bus bar will be connected to single pole circuit breakers, which will be feeding our final sub circuits. Here I've drawn a four way uh, bus bar. You can have maybe six, eight, and so on, depending on your demand for each consumer. And then your neutral comes through the double pole circuit breaker to the neutral bus bar and your ECC comes all the way to the earthing bus bar. Now one thing you'll notice is that our ECC cable, the earth continuity conductor, there's no interruption. In any installation, that ECC should be continuous. Here we are breaking the live and the neutral. Here the live and the neutral is broken when we switch on or off. But the ECC is continuous. That's something you should bear in mind. The ECC is always continuous. No switching or any arrangement should be connected to it. Now, in this case, I've drawn a four-way. I think it's self-explanatory. When you, this one is on, there will be power available here. And then from here, we connect the final sub-circuits. They talked about correspondence. The number four earth wire should go with the number four circuit breaker we go with the number four from the neutral. So they go together. It makes a fault finding, fault diagnosing easier. And that's also the professional way of doing things. So with advancement of population, more people in buildings, this consumer control unit has come into play into our operations. And we should be able, how, we should be able to know how to connect such a one. Now, the other thing which has come up in the market is an additional into a syllabus, I think something you should know since we are going out into the market, is that the energy meter here, which I've drawn here, this ones, as in the typical drawing where I showed you, there was a current coil and a voltage coil producing magnetic fields which were causing that disk to rotate, which measures, which helps us measure the energy consumed. Here we are consuming the energy we build the people. Now, the industry, KPLC, they have come up with a meter which is to replace the induction type one. The energy meter is being phased out by the prepaid digital energy meter. Now, with this one here, you have to pay for the power in advance. And normally, when, it is, when you are given the token, you have to buy the tokens, and once you buy them, then you feed them to the meter, and of course the meter will be a countdown. You mix, put so many, ta so many ta tokens, as the energy is consumed, the token, the digital meter will simply count down until all the units are exhausted, and then you have to replace with more tokens when they are exhausted. When the tokens are exhausted, the digital meter will disconnect power to your system until you feed in more tokens. Now that system of the digital meter operates through the GSM system and in some areas there are problems. In the past when they brought in the system the token, the energy meter, the digital energy meter had to be physically connected to the keypad where you feed in your tokens. This has to be a physical wire initially when they brought it in. Nowadays, this one has been removed and the link is wireless. And as it is, they operate through the GSM system so that this one here, uh, once you key in your token, is transmitted to this one here through wireless, the GSM system. And then this one's here, 
gets her number and then starts counting down as your energy is being used. This one I'm calling it here into the token through a keypad. You have a keypad here. And each keypad comes with its own digital meter. They're usually married together. You can't use this one for any other meter. When you get them from the KPLC, they come as a unit. And sometimes the distance between these two has been problematic in some buildings. So friends, sometimes this one here, although you plug it into the socket, you have to bring it nearer to your token for it to be able to transmit. Sometimes that linking, the GSM linking between your keypad and the digital meter has been causing some problems. And that's keyword when you bring it just close to the digital energy meter, it can be able to operate. And that's all I want to talk about the power supply to the buildings. You've seen for the single building, typical. This one is a bit uh, more advanced, may not appear in the examination, but this is what we are going to meet when you go out into the field. Most buildings nowadays, they are most solid buildings. You don't find the typical one. So this is the kind of stuff you are meeting. You'll be meeting when you leave the institute. So in our learning, as I said earlier, we have to try to tell you what you are going to meet once you come out. Now, before we go to our circuitry, I'd like us to talk about the earthing systems briefly. Now, I think it's a one means of protection, protect, providing protection in electrical installations. The key thing is, in order to reduce the risk of serious electric shock, the keyword here is serious electric shock, it is important to provide a path for the earth fault currents to operate the circuit, the circuit protection device, devices. This will be, well, the fuses or nowadays the circuit breakers. And also to endeavor to maintain all metal work and substantial and to endeavor to maintain all metal work at a substantially equal potential. That means all the metal work if it's at substantially equal potential, if you touch one area and the other one, chances of getting a shock is minimum. Electrical and non-electrical system. Well, the electrical systems is, for example, when you have an iron box, there is the metallic portion of the iron in the electrical bit. When you have something like a cooker, there is the body part of the cooker, which is not, uh, which is, in that case, is electrical. Now, in buildings, you have got exposed metals, which maybe you can touch while you're handling electricity. So that those is what's referred to as non-electrical systems, metallic bits which are near electrical insulations. They are the ones which should be bonded together so that they are at approximately equal potential. So the chances of voltage differences are minimal. The chance of getting a shock touching one and the other should also be minimum. Now, for those devices to operate, you need a current to flow through the earth. Now, the path for the earth fault current will then be via the earth itself. One method is to use the earth, a path for the fault currents. And the other method is to use metallic return path in the case of the TNCS system. Well, these are letters incorporated in the IE regulations. When we are using the earth itself, this kind of a system is known as TT. The regulations, they use T, which is a French word for earth. Earth itself, earth to earth, return. T here, earth, uh, normal conductor, C. Uh, C is for, let me check, C is for combined, and S is for separate. Now let's have a look at the return for false current, the earth return for false current. Now, remember, in our substation, we said the transformer 
is usually a delta to star so we have got a delta here and then converted to star this is in the final substation the one which is connecting the domestic installations and then we have got our cables here l1 l2 and l3 now we know the neutral here this one here is directly connected to the earth and then it's also where we produce our neutral so at the substation that point there is earth this is delta and this one is the star bit that one the central position the neutral is earth and then we have also got the neutral now these ones will travel and they'll come to our installation So well, let's use the L3. And the installation will have the the phase. Remember, ours is a domestic installation single phase. And there we have our neutral, and then in the installation we have got our E. CC Earth Continuity Conductor, which is the earthing system, which is the one we connect to the metal work, the electrical metal work and the non-electrical metal portions. And then this one here, the ECC, as we saw last time, this one is connected to the ground. Now this one is the one which is going to our installation. This is this one here through the main earthing terminal. Here we have got the earthing installation, earthing for installation. And this one here is earthing for the sub station. So what we want here in the case of earth return fault current, which is the TT, earth earth return system is that when you have a fault here in the live, those currents, if you have a body here, maybe a heater like that one, and then there is a fault here. Now this is the uh, electrical metal work. Now this is the one which is usually connected to the ECC. So when there is a fault here, touching the metal work, we should provide a path for that current to return to the substation. Otherwise, somebody touching this metal here can get a shock. So connecting the ACC here, it comes to the ground, and then it has to move back to the substation. So that path is provided through the earth return. So there is a fault here connected to the metallic portion. This one, the metal portion is connected to our earth continuity conductor, and then it moves down to the main earthing terminal down to the earth and back to the substation. So anybody touching that metallic portion, chance of getting a shock is not possible. It's a bit uh, minimized. So that's all there is to the earth return for the fault current. The fault finds a path to go all the way back to the substation. Now, on this idea of our installation, although we can see here our neutral here is earthed, and the ECC here is earthed. Inside here, the installation, the neutral and the ECC are separate. They should not touch. The neutral and the installation should not touch. Although when you look at it, it looks like they are kind of connected. This neutral is connected to the ground here. The ECC here is connected to the ground here. One of the high recommendations is that once we get into our installation, this idea is our installation. The two, the ECC and the N should be separate. Should be separate. I think that's where the S comes in. So that is what there is for the earth fault return. Now the other one is 
the metallic return. Now, the earth return is usually used in areas whereby the earthing When you are connecting this system here, for the current to flow through here, the resistance must be minimum. The eye gives the values that you should adopt when you measure your, what we call the earth loop impedance test. There is a test you carry out, and when you do that one there, your tripping mechanism, protective mechanism should operate. If they don't, then you need to go for another method. So this one is achieved whereby the earthing method is comfortable. You can get the values as recommended by the IEE. Now the next one is the metallic system. Number two. Metallic return for uh, Now, in this case here, the setup is similar. Now, the only problem we're having is that the earth fault, the earth return, can provide a high voltage, which can be harmful to our user of the electricity. Remember I said this is a delta star transformer at the substation. And this one here we said is connected to the earth. Then we have our neutral again coming all the way for our installation. Let's take one of the nails. Earth continuity conductor, and this one, as we said, is usually connected down to the earth. Now, in a situation like this one, is the ground path, the ground path may not the ground path may not cause the protection devices to operate. To operate. So we go in for a mechanic return. So in this case here, again as I said earlier, inside here the neutral and the ECC should be separated. But deliberately we connect the neutral here to the earth like that. Remember the earth is, not, is the one that cannot provide a good return path for our current. So it provides the metallic return. So in this case here our ECC is connected to the neutral. And then along the way up to the substation this neutral will be earthed at various points. So maybe when you have a fault, again like before, we have an element here. And then there is a fault. This is metal. That one will be connected to our ECC. It cannot pass through here. So it finds a path back to the neutral. And then through this uh, earthing point here, it can find its way back to the neutral. Well, in this case, you can see our neutral is all the way there. It comes back to that point there. But it's encouraged some of it to pass through the ground. So we have several of these. Why we have several? In case of breakages of some of these connections here, there will be imbalance in the networks, which I think, again, you have learned in your circuit analysis. 
So in this case here, the fault in this case here will come through the ECC and be connected back to the neutral and move back to the station. Now this is the method known as the, the TNCS. I think the TNCS. The earth, we have used various earthing points. The neutral, the uh, common and separate. In, in here, the ECC and the neutral con cabling, they are all separate. They are only connected at our intake point here. And one thing you notice in my diagram, the ECC, when I'm drawing it, is all continuous. But in the case of the neutral and the life, maybe in the system, we have the double port system to reconnect. There is a gap. The ECC is always continuous. So in this case, the installation earthing cannot provide a good path, but it is there. It has to be provided. Every installation must have an earth. And then what you do, you simply connect on this side here the ECC to the neutral. And then along the neutral, you earth the neutral wire as it goes along. Now, this same meth this method sometimes is referred to as the protective multiple earthing. In the brief, sometimes referred to as the P M E system of earthing. So those two methods are the ones that we take care of fault currents to ensure we don't get easy serious shocks when you're operating with these machines here in case any metallic portion there is a fault then we are we assumed to be safe and that finishes all i want to say about the power intake into our domestic installations then we can have a look at the circuitry involved in the domestic installations and we'll start off by looking at the controls how do we control maybe the lights and all those other devices we use in our domestic installation for the next session.